Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Colin and Curtis in the Morning. It is episode 66. I am Curtis, your host, at least for this year. I am joined, as always, by Colin. Hey, how you doing? I will take over the hosting duties in 2018. That's if you win the bets. If if I win these, if I win these bets, it's not going. It's not going great for you right now. There's, it's probably not, but you know, there's still 11 months left, and we can plenty of time. We we can do this. (laughs) Plenty of time. Uh, so welcome, uh, to our morning show. We got, we got some news to get through. Uh, I think it's probably you know we. We actually got news this week as far as like PlayStation Network, uh, even PlayStation Vita is concerned. So we get some news to get through. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of it's kind of siphoned off of the Nintendo Switch event from last night, yeah. Uh, so or, or from last week rather, I should say. Um, and then we got some games to talk about too. So we got we got like an actual show. It's starting to it's starting like the year is starting to happen again. Games are coming out in like just under a week. It's intense. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? I am Reggie. I what? Okay, uh, so let's kick it off with a brand new video game announcement, one that you've never heard of before until last uh, just a few days ago. Bunch of has-beens. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I'm bunch ready of has-beens. For it. Um, hey, so GameStop, you know they formed Game Trust last year. Yep. And we've already seen one release from them with Song of the Deep. Uh, that what it what's the uh, deformers? deformers? Is that what it's called? So that's out next month. Yep. Uh, on the fourteenth from Ready at Dawn. Ready at Dawn. Uh, you may know them from their cult classic, The Order eighteen eighty six. Or Daxter on PSP. Or Daxter, yeah. Uh, hey, we got a third game to add to the Game Trust uh collection. Yes, we do. Uh, so Frozen Bite. We knew that they were one of the studios working uh with game trust on a game they have announced what their game is that it's called has been heroes it's coming to playstation 4 xbox switch and pc so this game i believe is listed as a launch title for the switch Mm -hmm. which is out on the 3rd of march so i'm gonna guess somewhere or unless there's some weird exclusivity deal like timed for that console i don't think there is uh but i would imagine it's sometime in march on ps4 yeah, maybe maybe that week, maybe the week after, maybe it still, maybe it just comes out that Friday. Uh, mm-hmm. We've been starting to get more releases that are kind of staggered throughout the throughout the week on the digital store. So, um, but Colin, maybe you're wondering, what is Has Been Heroes? What is it, uh, Curtis? So it is uh, it's a roguelike strategy action game. Uh, it was actually in the like one of the montage reels during that Switch presentation. Uh, the thing it stuck out to me because the UI along the bottom of the screen reminded me of Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, I think I remember seeing this game. Yeah, it did remind me of that. Yep. Uh, so really quickly, I'm just gonna kind of read over some of the uh, synopsis stuff from the kind of the PR sheet that Frozen Bite sent out. Uh, let's see. So you embark on an epic journey with the Has Been Heroes. They are a group of legendary champions, uh, once celebrated through the kingdom for their heroic deeds, uh, and basically, so like. They saved the kingdom. They were heroes. Uh, but after doing so, they, the kingdom didn't need heroes anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't really needed to do any saving because they, they did it. They they saved the world. Evil was gone. Uh, and so then, after many years of peace, the king has one more quest. A quest so important, Colin, he can only trust to his epic band of heroes. Uh, the toughest and bravest in all the kingdom. And that quest, of course, is to take the twin princesses to school. Uh, so <laughs> that is your setup for the game. It is, and there, there's some other little bullet points, but it's a, uh, yeah, kind of a turn-based roguelike. Uh, there's some screenshots out there. I don't know that we have, other than the little montage, I don't know that we have video just yet. We might over the weekend. Maybe we'll get some since it is coming out pretty soon. Uh, it's going to be $20. And because it is with Game Trust, I imagine there will be a physical release at GameStop. Yeah. Probably some merchandise like they did with Song of the Deep. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm willing to check that out. Yeah. Uh, is that a... I, I know, like, UI-wise, it looks similar to Darkest Dungeon, but I don't... From what I was reading, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that similar. Maybe it's kind of, you know, similar uh, genres. It mm-hmm. looks more cartoony. It. So hopefully maybe it's not as punishing as Darkest Dungeon was. Uh, yeah. Is this something you're willing to give a shot? Oh, maybe. 
I don't know. I'm watching the trailer right now. Nothing, not, not too much is grabbing me, but uh, okay. I think it looks, you know, looks like some some mild fun for me. Yeah, I'm interested to get more like extensive footage because we didn't have a lot to go yeah. on for that one. So a lot of uh, quick next cuts up, in that trailer. Yeah, a lot of a lot of quick cuts, a lot of switching it up. A lot of switching. Hey, this is the the new story of the week. Colin, are you ready for this? Oh, are you on the Puyo Puyo thing? I hope all of our listeners are ready for this as well. The Year of Dreams, Part 3. It's already begun. We're getting Puyo Puyo Tetris, Colin. Why do we need Puyo Puyo Tetris when we already got Tricky Towers? Oh, don't even. Because Puyo Puyo Tetris is great. It's been out for who knows how long in Japan. Okay. We just never got it. Uh, so here's a, this is a, a, a tricky release, mm. perhaps. Um, so in Japan, it was out on uh, PS4. I think maybe out on Vita also. But it was physical only on PlayStation 4. Okay. Okay. When it comes out over here in the spring, uh, I think I saw it, again, listed as a launch game, but then maybe not. The PR says specifically spring uh, okay. that we got in the mail. So we'll see uh for sure but on playstation 4 it'll still be physical only so no digital uh version of this game i think it's gonna be 30 dollars on ps4 what's interesting is on the switch it's gonna be digital and physical hmm. uh the digital version will be 30 and the physical will be 40 huh so i don't okay. i don't know it's kind of weird yeah. uh i'm really excited for that though like that is a uh, it was one of those things we never really i think a lot of people lost hope that we'd ever get it and then a couple weeks ago those trophies uh for the game came out the english version of the trophies i should say Mm -hmm. and so that kind of renewed hope of like oh maybe that's actually happening and and here it is so that's super exciting uh not really much to say on that uh colin sounds like you're kind of down on the poyo poyo though uh i guess maybe what does poyo poyo even stand what does that mean that's it's a great question okay Whatever it means, I will put as the title of this episode. Like I got, I got the Tetris part. Like that makes yeah. sense, but I didn't, I didn't get the Puyo Puyo part. Wasn't Whatever. there like a, wasn't there like a PSP game with Puyo Puyo in the fr- in the title of it? It was like a downloadable game that we got for Maybe? free a long time ago. Oh, That's a great I question. Remember. I don't know. We should ask. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, a rose in the twilight. This game was announced for Vita. It is coming April 11th. So this is from uh, NIS, uh, specifically from the the team that did the the Firefly Diary, that like hashtag H T O L N I Q uh, puzzle game. I believe they were also responsible for Yoma Wari. I th- okay. I think. Uh, and so in that respect, I'm a little hesitant. I really did not like the Firefly Diary. Uh, I thought I think it's a really good looking game. It's got a really great art style, but the act the act of playing it, not a huge fan. Uh, they gave a little bit of a synopsis. It's a it's a puzzle game. Mm-hmm. Um, a rose in the twilight puts the player in direct control of Rose and the giant, and in order to successfully navigate and escape the castle, uh, the two will have to work together to solve puzzles and take turns using their own unique abilities. So I think you can kind of fill in the blanks there of like maybe what to expect from that. It's yeah. got a very similar art style to the Firefly Diary and, and Yomori to a lesser extent. Uh, but it does, as far as like being in direct control, I don't know, I don't remember, I don't think the blog post mentioned touch controls okay. uh, at all. So maybe it'll have that. I'm, I'm curious if it's going to control similar to the Firefly Diary or if it'll be a little bit different because mm-hmm. uh, it's a very, very similar art style. Okay. I don't think we have video of that. There's just a few screenshots out there. I'll have to check for sure. And then finally, um, Colin, uh, Night in the Woods on PlayStation 4 has a release date. It is coming out February 21st. This is a game we've talked about in the past. Yes. Uh, it's an adventure game. It was kickstarted uh, a couple years back at this point. Um, kind of the general synopsis here I've written down, uh, if you've forgotten, or if any of our listeners don't remember this game. Uh, college dropout May Borowski. Borowski? Uh, returns home to the crumbling former mining town of Possum Springs, seeking to resume her aimless former life and reconnect with the friends she left behind. But things aren't the same. Home seems different now, and her friends have grown and changed. 
Leaves are falling and the wind is growing colder. Strange things are happening as the light fades. And there's something in the woods. Uh, so it's an adventure game very much based on exploration, uh, character-driven kind of interactions. Uh, but even from the initial trailer, it always kind of teased like there was something darker kind of mm. lurking in the shadows. So excited to figure out what that is. Uh, Colin, any any interest in this? Yeah, so... I remember watching the trailer first couple times and like not being like all that great. I'm not saying all that great, but like not all that impressed. But uh, I'm kind of hoping this turns into like a dark kind of like game almost. Like it kind of yeah, it gives it, hints of that. Yeah, so I kind of hope this like I don't mean to I don't know. It's kind of weird to say like oh I hope this game's like really dire, but I think that'd be kind of cool <laughs> if it's really mm-hmm. kind of kind of gives it takes like a, a turn. Dark, yeah, I hope it kind of takes a turn. That'd be like, yeah. that'd be kind of cool with the, the style. Yeah. It kind of looks like it should be released in, like, the fall with all the leaves falling and stuff like that. It's gotten that kind of vibe going yeah. for it. Uh, and I, I really like the art style they've got going on. I, even from the initial trailer, I, that was the thing that really caught my eye. Of like, wow, this actually is a really interesting looking game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, yeah. So, let's see. So, that's kind of our news. Uh, Colin, let's, uh, let's break it into our what we've been playing discussion. I think we got got a few quickie bits here. Let's start with you, Colin. I want to know about Feast Feist. I think it's Feist. Feist. That, so, that's probably it. That was the best way I could describe it. Uh, this is a side-scrolling kind of. I don't want to call it a puzzle platformer, but it's a platformer. Uh, it runs <laughs> on Unity. Uh, see, like you're not really solving puzzles. I did a review on this. It's on the site. Uh, and I'd also do the gameplay glimpse that's on YouTube. For the most part, um, it's a pretty short game. You have levels that sometimes take from, can literally be two to ten minutes. And there's only ten levels, so it doesn't take very long to get through. Uh, basically the premise of the story is you're kind of a, a little being, a little kind of critter, I guess we'll just say that, that gets captured by these bigger monsters and you have to go find your other your significant other i guess i i guess is how we'll put it in that also got captured from these monsters uh the game kind of encourages you to like speed run levels which okay. i didn't really know how i felt about because there was like even trophies and uh stats at the end of the levels that said like this is how many times you're injured or this is how many times you die and this is your time but this is the target time so for the most part there are enemies but i never really felt compelled to kind of you know fight the enemies i just kind of was just kind of kept on running just because i wanted to try and get that speed run time so it kind of was like conflict of interest little thing almost uh just because i didn't really get to take in I, like i was pretty much running for my life the entire time and if, yeah. sometimes i felt like if i succeeded it didn't really feel like it was because i was luck it was like something i did it was just because like well this one enemy fell down right here and this you know one rock rolled this way and i was able to get past everybody um but yeah i think i gave it two and a half i believe that i think you even guessed correctly the other day um oh right yeah we were yeah. talking yeah yeah i uh i didn't okay. it's not great but i didn't think it was it's not bad either uh i think it's 10 bucks uh if you're interested mm. i'd say maybe give it a shot the uh end of the game really suffers from performance issues uh especially oh. at the last boss fight i started getting a lot of glitches um, where enemies like even just started becoming invisible and the background oh. and the foreground just started like glitching into each other uh became very frustrating that's not good that's not great um does and this is the game that kind of looks like those um the the levels in like the donkey kong games that are kind of like silhouette uh yeah it's almost yeah it's, is, it's does the whole like game that. look like that yeah it's that's pretty much the entire game all right, uh, all right. You, so you, when you mean well because when you mentioned the foreground and background like glitching into each other that yeah that sounds real bad <laughs> considering yeah the way that game looks it's almost like episodes one through four take place in the woods and then like five six and seven take place in a cave and then the rest of them take place out in the woods again Okay. Um, so there's not really all that much style differently to the levels, but um, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it is like the silhouette levels in Donkey Kong Country, mm-hmm. okay. uh, maybe maybe with a little bit of limbo thrown in there. So sure, uh, yeah. and then Verdun. Yeah, Verdun is the game that came out way back in like September, 
Yeah. And of course, it tried to tout itself as the first World War One shooter on next gen consoles. I mean, I guess you know technically uh... because Battlefield <laughs> One hadn't released yet. Yep. Um. So that's kind of like was their marketing kind of push for that. Uh, it's a kind of more. I don't know how to say. I guess maybe more realistic. Uh, first per- yeah, I say grounded. That's probably good. First person shooter. Uh, it's you know it, like one shot's probably gonna take you out. It's it's a lot of trench warfare. It's especially like when you're fighting over the trenches. If you pop your head out even just a little bit and try to run across the battlefield, somebody on the other team is probably going to shoot you and kill you. Uh, so you really need to kind of stay back and stay hidden. Um, the one mode that I played that seems to be the only mode that people play nowadays is uh, kind of like a conquest mode, uh, where basically you have an area and, you know, the enemy, if you capture this area, like in this kind of trench, you can push the enemy back, or then if you reclaim it, you can push them back. Um, it's, it's fun. The more I've played it, the more I've actually enjoyed it. I was getting pretty frustrated when I played it for a little bit. Uh, they can guess definitely get frustrating when you just have like a sniper at the back of the map that just snipes you and it doesn't have like a kill cam or like usually like when you die in a game, there's like a, a general direction that like points you towards like, Hey, this is where this yeah. person killed you from. Uh, there's none of that in Verdun. So th- there's hypothetically some person could just hide and just snipe people throughout the entire map and no one would ever know that they're there. Uh, but I'm starting to get better at the game, and when you actually pull off, like, even headshots and just, like, shots and kills from long range, it really feels satisfying, uh, which I, which I'm quite enjoying a lot. There's a, there's been a... You were saying the other day, so it's just, it's mostly just that one mode. Yeah, I've tried... you're finding matches on, like, the other ones here. Not so much. Yeah, there's a few other modes, but I've tried jumping into those modes like multiple times, and I just can't find anybody. It's just me in the it, lobby. Does it seem like there's a decent amount of people still playing at least that one conquest thing? Yeah, pretty much every time I've tried to jump on. I, I mean, even today, the game came out in September. I'm surprised, but there, there's still people online playing, almost to the fact that I, I've tried looking this up and I haven't found anything on it. But I wonder if this game is like cross-play with PC. Uh, no. <laughs> because I just cannot believe that there are this many PSN people on still playing this game. Hey, man, you never know. Yeah, you never know. But, Verdun, uh, sleeper hit. Verdun is, it's fun. It's not great, but it's fun. Okay. All right, ringing endorsement. Yes, back of the box. Um, so I spent $2 on that Kygo music video VR thing that they put out at CES. Thank you for taking one for the team, Curtis. We took, took, took it for the hit. It's carry me away. Stand uh, by me. Stand by me. So, yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't know what else I was really expecting. It's exactly what I thought it would be. It's like a two and a half, three minute music video. Mm-hmm. Uh, it shows up under the TV video apps. Okay. <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah, you start it. It just goes right into the music video. It's, it's interesting because it... Um, I'm just going to spoil it, the whole thing. Oh, man. So you're, like, in – you're, like, looking at this orb, right? Okay, and then the, the, there was, like, a bubble, like, a glowing bubble, and, like, they all – there's a bunch of other ones, and they all float up. And then you're, like, basically at the bottom of the sea. Okay. And then you start kind of rising up, and you get to, like, another level. You see, like, a – this – and the kind of the – the image of a person like created through a bunch of like pink and purplish like stars or dots and kind of like it forms this like person and then mm-hmm. they're playing like on keyboard and the song's going through and then you keep going up and then eventually you uh you go off the planet into space wow and that's kind of that's kind of neat it's like like that was the part i think that was the more the most impressive part of the thing cuz it's in vr like that's when you get kind of the scale and I think a lot of it plays up like, hey, there's a song going on, but as you're going from the deepest depths, and it's all very abstract, so you know it's not like realistic or anything. But as you're going up from the bottom of the ocean to like space, you kind of get that sense of scale, and so that's kind of neat. Uh, but then as you keep zooming out, eventually you zoom out, and it's outside of the bubble from the beginning. It's so it's like you're in the bubble the whole time. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, but it's like, I, I'm like, I spent, why did I, why did I buy this? I don't, if I didn't have money on my account, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but. So, is it, 
So it's not necessarily just like a music visualizer, I guess, or would you? No, call no. It it, you you start it up, it starts up the music video, and then when it ends, it just kind of loops back around. Okay. So that's it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't know. It's interesting, I guess. I. It's weird. Yeah. Um, I played How We Soar. This is a game on PlayStation VR. It came out a little over a month ago. It uh, so there's Eagle Flight from Ubisoft. And then there's How We Soar. How We Soar is the one that's kind of papercraft. I think we compared it to like almost Tearaway aesthetically. Yeah. Uh, so you're like riding. So you're not an eagle flight. You're the eagle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and How We Soar, it seems like you are positioned as someone riding on the back of like a phoenix. Uh, you the controller is actually like a um, like a, a harness that you would. Uh, whip is not the right word. That was like you, a I, like a reins or something. Yeah, reins. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, okay. You, it's like a rain, and you're able to kind of get the phoenix to fly a little faster, or give it a boost. Like whip it. Um, yeah, whip it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Anyways, uh, so you there's it's sectioned in different levels. There's like eleven chapters, I think. Okay. Uh, and each one not not too long. I've I've played the first four or five so far. They're anywhere from like five to ten minutes maybe a little longer than that Mm -hmm. if you just kind of fly around a bit but you're flying through rings Uh, as you fly through rings more of the the structures are being built around you and so that's kind of cool watching them kind of form together out of paper and there's like little orbs you collect as you do that and as you collect the orbs and fly into certain parts of these structures you get like a voiceover and it's kind of like telling this overarching story uh throughout so like so far i don't really have a good uh grasp of what the story actually is i've got like one element uh it seems to be telling a person's life like a mm-hmm. storyteller's life or something uh but one the, the the thing that stuck out to me was in like the second chapter second level there's a big castle that is built as you're flying through these rings and on top of the castle there's a uh, dragon and so at one point, as you're flying through the rings, you fly into the dragon's mouth, and you're flying through it all the way through the tail. And one of the things that happens is, as you fly close to things, you're basically painting a color onto these objects. Hmm. Uh, so it's not required. There are trophies for painting the worlds. Uh, so it's a really neat effect, kind of Okami-esque in a way. Mm-hmm. Um but that was a really neat thing of like flying into the dragon, like through it and coloring it uh, was neat. But also like that level in particular was uh, this moment for me where I was like, man, as a big Harry Potter fan, uh, when I was when I was growing up, it'd be cool to have like a Hogwarts to scale, like a really detailed Hogwarts, and just fly around as like a Hedwig or any other owl. Yeah, like that'd be neat, or on a broom, preferably Hedwig though. I think that'd be neat. Flying and on just Hedwig. Able, yeah, just flying around. Not Yeah, not riding Hedwig. I, I want to be Hedwig. <laughs> and I want to just like fly around Hogwarts. I think that'd be yeah. cool. Uh, so someone should do that. I think EA's still got the license, right? Uh, I don't know, but uh, when Wonder Book 2 comes out, I when think Wonder, you're, yeah. you're going to get it. We'll get it. Uh, Colin, ask me anything about Anywhere VR. Um, so where do you go in Anywhere VR? You can go to Mount Fuji. Where else can you go? You can go to Generic Beach. Which beach? Just a beach. I don't know. Just a beach? Is it the beach where Gary the Gull lives? Uh, maybe. I didn't see him there. Okay. But it could be. What kind of music plays in Anywhere VR? Uh, relaxing music. Is it relaxing? Sure. Okay. Are there trophies in Anywhere VR? Yes, there are. Is there a platinum in Anywhere VR? No, there is not. That's not really a game, then. Well, there are (laughs) games. There are games in Anywhere VR. Oh, okay. What kind Uh, of games? So there are two. Uh, One is a fishing minigame. On a beach? I did a little bit. Uh, uh, Well, I mean, so there are other locations you can go to. I downloaded this from the Japanese PSN store. Okay. Um... And so there are other locations and other songs and, and some things you can purchase. I don't know what they cost. Uh, I clicked on them and didn't take me anywhere because I was playing on the U.S. account that I have. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, you have Mount Fuji uh, and then Beach. Well, both are technically beaches. 
uh, one you can just see Mount Fuji off in the distance. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know it kind of cycles through both and it plays relaxing music. Uh, so there's the fishing thing, which is kind of neat. I did like five or ten minutes of. Uh, but the game I got stuck on, Cullen, is Honeycomb, which is basically Minesweeper but with bees. Oh, okay, yeah, I was, I was hearing something about this. Yeah, so there's two modes. There's, like, you go through levels, and the levels start out kind of small, very, very easy, and as you progress, they get larger, a little bit more complicated, and it's all, like, hexagon, so it looks like a honeycomb, basically. Yeah. okay. Uh, same rules apply. It's a little bit more lenient. Uh, you have hearts, so you start out with three hearts, which is a hit, uh, whereas in Minesweeper, if you hit a bomb, game over. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also get a like a fly swatter so if you like if you get a combo so if you know like minesweeper you can plant flags of like oh i think a mine's right here yeah and this you can plant markers of like i'm pretty sure a bee's right here if you don't do that and continue clicking through the honeycomb without getting hit mm -hmm. you can build up a combo and as you do that you can get more hearts you can refill your hearts or you can get these, like, fly swatter items. Uh, and what that can do is, like, let's say you're on a big honeycomb. And you're kind of, like, maybe you got one hit left. And you're not really sure where to go next. You know, you're kind of at a dead end. If you got the fly swatter, you can use it anywhere. And it's basically a gimme. So, like, if you hit the if you hit a spot where a bee would be with a fly swatter, it automatically kills the bee. Okay. Uh, so that way you don't have to worry about taking a hit. And those are limited. So it's a bit more lenient, but there's like some new mechanics. Uh, and then there's a challenge mode, which is this, just this huge uh, honeycomb that took me about like 10 or 15 minutes to beat. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And, and yeah. like having the music play through was, was great. Uh, so two things I want to note real quick, though. So at the top of the hour, there's a, a female voice chimes in and she goes, uh, it is 6 p.m. It is 7 p.m. And she just says that at the top of the hour. So that's how I knew. Because I started at like right before 6. And at some point while playing this honeycomb game, I just hear a chime. And this woman goes, it is 7 p.m. And I'm like, wait, hold on. I was full intention of going into this for about five minutes and then never opening it again. But here we are. Huh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things like Minesweeper is just kind of fun yeah to sit back and do uh and as it turns out honeycomb also is is pretty fun yeah so there's like some different trophies tied to those games and tied to some other th things there is a um so there's an android app that if you download you can sync it with the game and if you remember when this was announced at tgs had the yeah. the girl on the couch and she like pulled her phone out and then the mm -hmm. phone showed up in vr that's how you do that does the phone iPhone. show up in in? Oh, you wouldn't. Know. Okay. I have an iPhone, so I, yeah. <laughs> I selected it, and it had a little place for it to show up. Yeah. And it looked like it was kind of like a HUD, so it would just follow me around, like in the top right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if yeah, I don't. I have an I have an iPhone, so it seems like an Android only. For now, I'm not too sure. It was all in English, okay. so I don't know if they're gonna bring it over or like. I mean, it's been out for like a month and a half. Mm -hmm. on the japanese store i was looking at it so i don't know uh okay. i thought it was pretty neat though it's there's not like much more to it uh but it was it was cool i was like all right this i wish this honeycomb thing was like its own game i i, I play that yeah flesh that thing out put it out as a as a standalone game i'll i'm there <laughs> why not mm -hmm. um yeah. and lastly right, one more thing so we, time to dance Time to dance. Are you okay. ready? I'm dancing. Uh, I I don't I don't have much to say about this. I am. This is the first time I've ever played one of these games. Got my um, Sonic but, costume on. <laughs> yeah. Um. But Hatsune Miku, Project Diva, Future Tone, and Color Guardians. Oh, what is Color something? Um. So a new Hatsune Miku game came out this week. Yeah. And it is so the interesting thing about this is you can download it for free and it comes with two songs and then you got like some trophies uh so it's not like a demo like no trophies tied to it it's like a platform you're downloading 
and they have two song packs you can download so there's a there's future tone and then there's color or something i don't remember the name of it Mm -hmm. um but each one has like 100 or 120 songs uh okay. they're thirty dollars a piece or you can buy them both for I think it's like fifty four right now mm-hmm. uh discounted. And and so it's I I guess past Hot City Miku games have had like stories and kind of relationship uh modes. Uh this is like just purely the arcade game where it's just you're playing the rhythm game. And if you buy everything, you've got like well over two hundred songs with more coming like each month for the next few months. And uh, it's just really good. Like, it is a really, really good rhythm game. Cool. Um, reading through, like, the NeoGAF thread on the game, is, it's, and even just, if you look at the reviews, it's kind of, like, being regarded as, like, one of the best Hot City Miku games. Mm-hmm. So, and it also, like, because it's, like, just all almost all the songs from everything that's been out there, and it's kind of the arcade version of it anyways, uh, it kind of feels like, one, might just be the definitive version of hot say Miku, if that's what you're looking for uh, but yeah. also for someone like me who like you know i i know what hot Miku is i've been familiar with that for a few years but i've never played the games uh it's kind of a good jumping in point so i just bought one pack um i didn't want to buy both even though i probably a better deal to do so i just bought the one um i already had money on my account so it didn't cost me too much anyways uh and i'm I, i'm super into it it's it's really great like it's hard Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you can sympathize with this because you reviewed uh, Super Beat Zonic. Yeah, which is pretty different, but also like I I seem to get that these are these are both kind of like, hard, <laughs> I don't know if hardcore is the right word, but like very hard rhythm games. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, like it's tough. It it is a very different kind of, uh, I it, it's different from what I'm used to. Uh, but what's cool is like all the songs have these like really elaborate and well animated like music videos um not that i'm able to pay much attention to them you can just yeah. watch the music video if you want without okay, having to cool. hit the notes which is cool uh yeah it's neat it's uh it is something there's some good mm-hmm. there's some good tracks so far that i've gotten through i've played like it's the thing man like you 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 get like hundreds of songs in there for any kind of rhythm game that takes you some time to get through i bet yeah. i remember playing a. Uh, theater rhythm curtain call and that's got like 200 or 300 some songs man that took forever to play through all of those songs yeah it's also why i'm not too not not in a hurry to buy the second pack because i've got mm-hmm. like 120 some songs right now to get through yeah having a good time with it though um sure. and man you know like uh atlas and sega they got a pretty decent start to the year yeah come come back cool. next week and i'll <laughs> have another game to talk about yeah uh, but that's gonna do it for the main portion of this episode. Unless okay. you have anything you would like to add, Colin. I don't. I just kind of want to switch it up. Let's switch it up. Let's make the switch. But before we do so, Colin, perhaps you can tell our listeners about where they can find us on the internet, or if they would like to support us, how they can do so. Sure. Uh, well, you can follow us on Twitter at PSN Stores. Uh, that is the group account. I am at Bossman C. Crowder. Curtis, where can they find you? I am at P.S. Penguin. Yeah. You should uh, also know that, uh, Colin, your Twitter is two S's and two C's. Yes, I am two S's and two C's and one W and an E and an R and a... There's a D in there somewhere. There's yeah. A, a, there's an O. Yeah. Yep. Ne- next time on Wheel of Fortune, guess my name. Uh, yep. I don't know. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PSN stores. Uh, trying to keep the Facebook and Twitter updated a little bit more regularly now. Um, and also kind of try and uh, look over that more than usual. Uh, so, if you know, if you tweet at us, we can get back to yep. you in a more timely manner. Uh, and if, such you, like that. Uh, if you want to email us a question, fan fiction, your favorite Hatsune Miku track, you can do so at podcast at PSN stores.com. Absolutely. And we'll look forward to it. Yeah. So uh, with that, oh well, if you got something else to add, a Patreon. Oh, we got a Patreon to talk yes. about. Yes. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash PSN stores. Uh, if you'd like to support this show, uh, you can uh, give us a few dollars. If not, that's okay. Thank you for listening. Uh, but that's out there if you decide to want to support us. It helps uh, buy mm-hmm. new equipment, helps kind of keep the keep the site going. Uh, so It keeps the podcast yeah. running. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, and and one other thing, really quick, uh, in case anyone du- like ducks out after this and they don't want to hear Switch talk, um, today, starting today, our Game of the Year awards are going up on the site. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're gonna uh, hand like a few categories every day leading up to Friday, which will be our, our official Game of the Year, our top five games of 2016. Uh, for the PlayStation Network specifically, uh, we'll also have a it's like a two hour long podcast. So basically, at the end of the week, if you'd like to know how we arrived at our decisions for each category, um, that is a podcast you'd want to listen to, and that'll go up next Friday or this upcoming Friday. Mm-hmm. So I just want to get that in there really quick. Uh, that is starting this week a little bit later than usual, but uh, we got it done. Yes, and I'm I am pretty happy with the results. I think. I think so, so too. Yeah. Now, with that said, Colin, uh, snap your fingers. Let's make the switch. We're making the switch to do, this person. Do, 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 do. Okay, Colin. Hey. Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, so is it, this, is it March 3rd yet? Is it March 3rd yet? Man, that's so much sooner. That's two whole weeks sooner yeah. than I thought we were getting it. Yep. Let me... Okay. So Nintendo Switch, it like that event happened. Um, I think the only reason we're talking about this on a PlayStation podcast is because you and I both are like, I don't know, I don't know now. Maybe you're not excited anymore, but we were like pretty excited for this. Nintendo will always hold a and, and, special yeah, place in and my n- heart. Nintendo, it's always to like, it, it's always easy to be get excited about Nintendo stuff, even if they do their darndest to make, to make you. Yep. question every decision they do so the nintendo switch event happened um we know the launch date we know the price and we know many different prices of accessories uh have a general idea of the launch lineup although mm-hmm. i i have a suspicion there might be more games added maybe some indie stuff yeah over the next coming weeks but i think we j- you know you and i have not talked about this at all to each other nope uh so i don't know what you think you don't know what i think Maybe with yep. a few tweets being mm-hmm. exceptions. Um, but let's start, I guess, you know, the way that they did. And I'm kind of glad they did. They started at the top of the show. They're like, okay, look, it's coming out March 3rd. It's going to be $300 in the U.S. Um, and that was the two main things. Uh, and they kind of went into, like, you know, what would come with the system when you bought it. But, yeah, so, like, my, my reaction as, you know, Kimishima on stage... It's like okay, it's coming March third, uh, worldwide, and initially I was like, oh, oh, dude, that's so much sooner. That's two whole weeks. That's awesome. Like, yep. Now it's instead of it being like a, a little over two months, we're now like a month and a half mm-hmm. away. Like that's super exciting, um, or can be maybe maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then three hundred dollars. Um, well, what do, what do you think? What do you you know? You hear three hundred. What's your initial reaction i think i think I, I could do it i think i could do 300 okay um i would have preferred 249 oh absolutely yeah but You're not alone. yeah but uh but seeing that 299 i was like i just kind of shook my head and i'm like okay that, that's fine i could i could probably do that it was it was re- i mean i wish it's one of those moments i wish like could have been recorded or like people could more people could have seen it just to see the the reaction because the 299 comes up uh i and someone else as we're watching go oh and then another person enters the room and goes oh that's pretty cheap and (laughs) (laughs) um but you know after the initial reaction because i think a lot of people were really expecting 250 Mm -hmm. and a lot of the uh the insiders we'll call them seem to be banging the 250 drum yeah it felt like that was gonna be it. it. Like that just felt like a good price. I, I've, I've told other people. And I think maybe you and I have talked about this too. I've always felt like you know two fifty to three hundred, was kind of, the expectation. Yeah. I think three hundred is the highest they could go, for the console. I I'm pretty similar to you. It's it's like you know, obviously the lowest price is always preferable, uh, if you can get it. I don't think unlike. So to me, you know, when the PS4 price was announced at 400, that felt like, and especially in comparison to the Xbox One, of course, for sure. Uh, but announcing that at 400, it felt like an immediate yes. Yeah. That's 
that's the price. That's such a that's such a good place to come in at. Um, and so we've had other situations like that. I mean, I guess you could argue VR as well. Having VR at four hundred was another moment of like, yeah, that's that's about as low as you can go. You know, that's mm-hmm. um pretty good. And this where it was more of like you said a, I can swing it. Uh, I might not like it, but I yeah. can swing that. Yep. Um. So so that's fine. Uh. Then they led into. I guess like the first half was mostly kind of first party stuff. Well, I have a I have a schedule oh. here. Okay. If you want to go you, through some? Yeah. Of the go stuff. through. Go uh, through. So it. so the first thing, of course, March third. Second thing, two ninety nine, ninety nine. Yeah. The next thing Kimishima talked about was that there will be a free trial period. Yes. For oh, online man. services at the beginning of the year. For, yeah. But then in fall of 2017, there will be a paid service. Uh, now, there is a little bit more details on this paid service on yeah, get into them. the uh, Nintendo, Nintendo, website, yep. Nintendo website. And you go to online services. Yep. And it says, online lobby and voice chat. Our new dedicated smart device app will connect to Nintendo Switch and let you invite friends to play online, set play appointments, and chat with friends during online matches and compatible games all from your smart device. A free limited version of this app will be available to download uh, in summer of 2017. The next thing, monthly game download. Subscribers will get to download and play an NES or Super Nintendo game uh, with added online play for a free free for a month. And then yeah. finally, exclusive deals, special offers for subscribers may include discounts on digital games and yeah. content. The one I want to go back to is definitely the monthly game download. Well, before okay, before you get there, I want to okay. go back even farther. Okay. To the the app. Yes. So this has not as of as of this moment, the, it's been a little dicey. I don't know if we got exact mm-hmm. confirmation on how this pans out. The app isn't even going to be available for the summer. Yeah. The way that's worded sounds like the app is how that voice chat and that kind of stuff is going to happen. That's what it sounds like. Colin, surely, surely, even Nintendo will have a native voice chat invite system on the Switch. Surely, they're not going to require a smartphone. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, that you're going to have to have a smartphone. Surely. There's no way, right? It it's almost like I don't know. I might be completely wrong with this, and please write in if I'm completely wrong on this. It's almost yes, like do. <laughs> it's it's like uh, isn't it kind of like the whole origin EA origin thing that happened with like Battlefield that like you had to have a web client to to play like Battlefield. Oh, I, I don't remember. Like, it was like, it was yeah, like you, I mean, I mean, it's like there's a early and like there's you know, a v- if you, there's a very different thing between yeah. Hey, you need a web browser and you need a smartphone. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it just kind of seems like it's not integrated into the game or it's not integrated into the system. Uh, There's no way, very... right? There's no yeah. way. Like, I know, obviously, we don't have information. They haven't, I don't think they've confirmed it necessarily. Uh, the, the paid app is will be part of the paid subscription for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what they've said as far as that's concerned. But then you've also got, like, it not being out till summer anyways. So, yep. so so you wonder like is what like what about from March until summer uh and we'll get we'll get there with the whole page thing in fall anyways but like I don't you know it's I don't know it, surely that stuff is just there in the switch right it's got to be that'd be crazy you if hope it wasn't so. anyways yeah. let's go to what you were the other thing um, so apparently, uh, let me see if I can find the article. I believe this is from, uh, I saw this, I think first on like IGN, uh, but it had to do with Chris Kohler, I guess, reported yeah. from a Nintendo rep that the monthly game download will only be available for a limited time, like kind of meaning so, that you won't be able to keep that game once you've played it. Like it's only it's a like rental. a free, it, yeah. So here's... Some people noticed the wording last, uh, you know, after the event happened, mm-hmm. and people were pointing out, like, man, that that kind of sounds like you're not keeping these things. Yeah. Uh, they are NES or Super Nintendo games. Yeah. Uh, and one of the, we should say, like, you know, one of the really cool things about this 
is some of these games are going to have like online. Yeah, they said with newly added online play. Yeah, like that's that's super really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, and you know you hear that and you're like you know what on a, like it it is one game a month, but man like there are some really good Super Nintendo and NES games like. Yeah. You know, you could have something going there depending on what games they choose for sure. But uh, I just imagine Super Mario Kart, you know, or something, you know, being able to play online with yeah. Super Mario Kart or something. Like that's such really a crazy cool. thing. Like that's pretty yeah. cool. It's frustrating. This look, is frustrating. Look, look, like I get it. I get like in Nintendo's head, they're like, "Oh, we're not really competing." with the other platforms it's like no look like say what you will about playstation plus that thing and xbox live gold monthly give you more than one multiple free games a month yeah games that are a couple years old at the most yeah you can't i don't like i don't know i i honestly like because here's the thing it would if they came out and said okay every month we're gonna have a rotating list of like 20 nes and super nintendo games that you can play and but they'll rotate out you won't keep them mm. but they'll rotate as this kind of rotating subscription something i feel like I'll, i've heard a lot of people especially within the press say hey th- what would, it would be interesting if the virtual console became a subscription-based thing where you would have a rotating list of games you could play yeah and if you wanted to buy one you could but if you didn't want to like buy like keep buying a bunch of games you could just have this kind of rotating list that you could play per month if they did that i'd be all in i'd be like that's super cool like you'd always have something new but this this idea of like yeah we'll we'll toss them one game because here like they have the single they have the worst online service of any company right now the console manufacturer by far it's no competition like sony say what you will but psn they are at least at some level of quality we'll call it quality yeah that's debatable i know and then microsoft is doing pretty well by themselves i think yeah to me the initially my thought was having it go pay in the fall to me was like all right clearly they know that asking people to pay for a nintendo network is ludicrous and so clearly they're going to use that time from launch till fall to say, all right, let us prove ourselves to you. I don't think mm-hmm. that's the case anymore. I think the network is just not ready. Yeah. I think that it is literally like in beta until at least the summer when this app comes out. And even then, maybe not fully finished. Mm-hmm. I would be willing to bet that there are multiple aspects of this network service. We know for sure the video sharing isn't going to be ready at launch. I bet the voice chat isn't going to be ready at launch. I bet a number, maybe even a party system won't be ready at launch. Yeah. But at the they, same time, I will, but, but I will, what I will, but I will say go ahead. what game at, we'll get into it. What game at launch are we going to play that has online? Cause there's not really any at launch that have online play from Bomber what Man? i recall does bomber okay does I that have so. online okay i think it does because i was like splatoon's not at launch arms isn't at launch uh mario kart's about a month and a half out yeah that's true yeah um no no i mean poi poi tetris whenever that comes out i'm pretty sure it has online okay uh there will be some games that do i will not pay for online for this thing it just depends on how much it is Inle- for me unless we hit the f- well yeah I so they haven't announced price which is smart yeah. on their part let that be an e3 thing hope to god they come out and they really surprise us because like that's my position i told chris earlier i was like unless they really shock the world here and they wor- roll out a network that is like legitimately great and it has like some interesting stuff going for it other than just online play can you well, change not... your name yeah right <laughs> uh i'm happy with my nintendo network id yeah. I but yeah, unless that's the case, I will not. I'm not like, I'm not. I don't play online on any Nintendo platform I have or had in the past. Yeah, yeah. like Splatoon, I played a little bit, but like I'm excited for Splatoon too. I'm pro- won't really play online that much. Like Arms, maybe depending on how how I get into Arms, 
But like, hey, at that point, I'll have a few months with those games to play for free. Yeah. Like, they've got to know. They've got to know that they need they need to take this time to prove to people that it's worth spending any amount of money for this. Mm-hmm. In yeah. this whole, yeah, this, the one game, and we're, oh. And they're like, they're NES and Super Nintendo games. Yeah. It, it'd be different if it was like, hey, it's like a regular, it's like somewhat, re- like, recent. Yeah. That'd be at least different. I'm like, oh, I can understand. But, like, come on, man. See, the thing is, I could see this service, I could see this service being, like, $20, though, honestly. Like, I could see a this year? service. Yeah, I could see it being something, like, cheap as Maybe. that. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's if they if they come out and they're like, yeah, it's fifty bucks a year g- game. Goodbye. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's not that's at all. Way too much. Yeah. I yeah, that's I have no faith. I I going into this, you know, like knowing DNA was doing it, so like I get it, it was like a mobile phone company, but at least they have experience, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe that feeds into this whole mobile app thing. I don't know, but going into this, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get somewhere with this. Maybe you know, and granted, we there's a there are so many questions. There are way too many questions a month and a half out from launch that we still don't have answers to. Yep. Uh, about the account system and the network mostly. And like that's insane to me. Yeah. Um I'm being negative now, but we'll have the positivity's coming. Yeah. Don't worry. Is um, they got the bad news out of the way quick and in some ways that's yeah. good. In some ways that's good. They're yeah. Yeah, well, here's like another next thing they talked about. A good news is that it's region free. That's uh, great. They're not, they're not region yeah. locking anymore. Uh, they said battery life will be two to six hours. Uh, there was some other. So kind Breath of, of the Wild specifically, they said three hours. Like three hours. Yeah, that's what I remember. And I imagine you know some of your smaller games, some of your indie games. Um, a Bomberman perhaps is probably where you're gonna hit the five to six. Yeah. Hour range. So. That's about what I expected. I think the top end is a little higher than I thought. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but that that and the region free thing, I was like, okay, yeah, region mm-hmm. free especially. It's it's about time. Yeah, uh, eight switches can be played on for local play, which I thought was pretty cool. Yep. Um, they talked about that. Um, there's this. Uh, they called it a capture button, which we'll just call it a share button. Do you think uh, like there's added. a trademark on the share button? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you don't want to call it the same thing. I mean, we yeah. had like our options and start for a long time. Yeah. Between different. Start and yeah. select. Start and select. Sorry. Yeah. We have options now. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of cool. They said, it's yeah, cool. like you were saying earlier that uh, you can record screenshots right now when I guess it launches, but at some at a future point, you'll be able to record video and post it to social media. Which I don't know if we talked about before. I wonder... I wonder how the video stuff's going to play with YouTube and Nintendo. Yeah. Um I guess we'll we'll find out. Yeah. Did you see like so Nintendo invited a, like people to just like stream restream the press conference? Yeah, I was seeing and then, something like, about that. People yeah. did that and we're getting content ID strikes after the fact. Oh no. Nintendo. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Uh Next thing, they just talked about the color variations on the uh, Joy Cons. Yeah, talking about the wrist straps. One of the uh, one of the Joy Cons has HD rumble, and the other one has this motion sensor. Wait, hold on. Is it one a piece, or do they both have motion? Well, I think they both have motion. Sorry if I said that I'm wrong. I'm surely they both have the HD rumble, right? I thought I was hearing about one of them. I I might be completely wrong, but I thought they it was. Made it you know, we like were getting information from a translator, so yeah. I don't see any reason why. Yeah, I think they probably. Yeah, they, you're probably right. They probably both have Rumble. For some reason, they made because so, they showed one. They he held up one. He was controller, holding up one because and he showed the sensor, and then he held up another one and showed the glass with the ice in it and stuff. Maybe yeah. So the HD Rumble was hearing that described uh, from other people. That sounds interesting. Like that's kind of mm. a neat thing. Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they uh, spent they st- way oh. too long on those controllers. Uh, I didn't think it was too bad. It was like um, fifteen to twenty minutes before we got past those yeah. controllers. 
Yeah, he. Yeah, I remember he, he did that on stage kind of thing, and he's like, "This is the analog stick," and you're like, yeah. "Okay, we get it." It's like the the um, frustrating thing is 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 it's always classic Nintendo is like they have these things, especially as we get into the games portion of the of the show, that are really exciting, and there are the things that you see, and it's like, yeah, it's like this is only Nintendo will bring us this, right? Yeah. And then they have these things where you just look at it and like, what what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You just don't get it. Like when that teaser came out at the end of October, it was concise. It made sense. The the switch name, the click, the snap sound, all of that just it it all for lack clicked. of a better word, it clicked. And yep. even those controllers, I felt like they did more for those controllers at explaining what they are and how they can be used in that like a minute and a half to two minute teaser video than they did in that 15 to 20 minute just oh here's this button and here's this mm-hmm. one with the with the exception of the capture button and then the hd rumble which i feel like could have just been a side note of a, a one random game that was brought up at some point yeah like even our show in 20 minutes in we're still talking about the this controller which weirdly felt like jumping back to the Wii era for a bit. Yeah. Which I thought was weird anyways, but yeah. Let's let's get to this first game. First game. Uh count with me, Curtis. 1 1 2, two three, switch. 3 Oh. Oh, it's switch. Oh, one, you two, missed switch. it. 1 2 switch. 1 2 switch. Um it's it really does kind of feel like I was the game comes out uh, March third, and I was waiting Launch for them title. to say, "Yeah, I was waiting for them to say this was going to be the pack-in title." Yeah, a perfect pack-in game, right? Yeah, but it's but it's not. What? Yep. What do you, What do you mean? It you have to buy it separately. It's like oh, a it's it's like game. it's like ten dollars, right? Oh, I think it's. Uh, I don't think so. Here, well, let me just let me just grab this paper um that I got from uh GameStop when I was there earlier today. Does this say ten dollars? Let me just grab this paper. Uh, it was showing. Sorry, there's like crinkling in the mic. Um, sorry, but it had you know it had a list of, of some games you could pre-order. Uh, so let's see. Oh yeah, here it is. One two switch. Oh. Uh, this is a fifty dollar game. Fifty dollars. Why? What? Now was the cow milking thing part of one two switch? Yes. Yeah. It's oh all part of gosh. it. Oh my gosh. You, oh man, th- I I can't comprehend that this milk game exists. Game, <laughs> I don't. So like the the first thing they show is like the the quick draw. The quick draw, yeah. And I think that for me, I was like, okay, all right, that's kind of interesting. That's cool. Um, yeah. they showed some other stuff. I I was getting heavy sports friends, uh, Johan Shigashi yeah. and Joust vibes. I was like, okay, it's clicking. You know, like all right, like, and the whole time I'm thinking perfect packing game of course Mm -hmm. of course the milk thing is like goofy and funny but it's also like what because you're you're milking a cow you you have two people sitting down staring each other (laughs) arms outstretched holding a single joy con controller and just up and down motions milking a cow you don't do that every day. You don't do that I, every day in Ohio. Do, wh- what's Kansas like? Is that a thing? Oh, we do it every morning. We we each we each. Uh, it's actually part of a. Uh, it's part of a law that we each have a, a oh cow with us in our basement and that like, we have to keep. The thing is, every day. I would be so into this if it was a packing game. Yeah. The fact that they're fifty dollars or like built in, like built in software or something. Like, is there like even is like there the face raiders? Thing. There's gotta like, what be what is, something like surely maybe there's a whole a whole like. Hundred mini games here that we just don't know about. Yeah, they only talk about five, uh, right? This like there were just so many things. Like, like I imagine think, if they made like Face Raiders on 3ds, like a like a full like a full fifty dollar forty dollar game. Imagine, yeah, imagine if it was like a thirty dollar game at launch. Face yeah. Raiders. Yeah, it's like why don't why wasn't this a pack in title? Because I get it. Like I get like the desire. You know, it's Nintendo. They they want to create like a mini game collection to show off. A gimmick of what their controller, yeah. yeah, and that's fine. But I don't know, man. Like I'm always, 
I, I always try my best to like, you know, give the benefit of the doubt. It's like, okay, maybe there's something here that we don't know about. And maybe there is, but it's hard to think of anything for one to switch that other than just, Hey, it's that launch and we know people are going to want to buy some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, the positivity's coming. Don't worry. It just took a little while to get there. Uh, so what was next? What was next is we also had another trailer of two people walking in front of each other. Yes. And then staring at each other in a black yes. kind of dark area. But then and then, uh, and then like uh, Spring Arms, Arms came out. And then they all looked like Mega Man bosses. And they started throwing punches at each other. Punch out on steroids. Yes. I think this game Colin, looks pretty cool. This game looks freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I think it looks really on cool. on the arms hype train. Yeah, I think it looks Sign cool. me up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this was this was also an, ended up being demoed on Treehouse Live. I don't think you or I have seen that segment. I've heard I've seen a lot part of, of it. Okay. I, yeah. How did it look? Because I, I feel like when I was I, looking on Twitter, I saw people being like, oh, this looks good. It looks really good. And so part of the... What was even great was that they had uh, the gameplay showing, but then they also had like the camera portion at the top right showing uh, the people playing from Treehouse playing mm. it, and it looked really fluid. Like they were, you know, just making their small movements to the right, to the left, yeah. uh, jumping, throwing a punch. Like it just didn't seem like he had to like fully extend his arm. He just kind of had to jab a little bit, and the thing punched. He just kind of had to twist the controller just a little bit, Yeah, and it moved. I think it looks like the motion controls look real, like work really well. well. And, and there's thing. no um, there's no camera or, or any sensor bar or anything. It's all just yeah, the IR yeah. stuff and the controllers. And uh, it seems like, from what I heard, people were saying pretty positive things about the tracking. Uh, yeah. But also, like, uh, they did confirm that you can just use traditional controllers Mm-hmm. for it which i'm i'm okay. really happy about i would yeah but i think there is something to like the the punching animation um did we we got a punch out yeah we we got a wee punch out game right that yeah, happened was, a was it, it was, yeah. okay i was just making sure i was like surely that that would make sense uh yeah this i mean yeah i the whole time i thought man this is punch out on steroids like this this yeah. is great uh true it reminded me a lot of splatoon's reveal now, the difference, of course, is that this game's like a couple months away, whereas mm-hmm. Splatoon was almost a full year out. Yeah. Because if you remember when Splatoon was revealed, it was very minimal. There was like one weapon, one map, one mode. Uh, it was kind of unclear what the full game would have. And some would argue that when Splatoon came out, it was still lacking some online stuff. But it had a full campaign, a very good campaign, I would add. Um, so granted, this this game's a couple months out. It's in the spring, mm-hmm. uh, but it reminded me of that of like, because I I'm sure there's probably gonna be a number of characters to choose from. They're showing off obviously the multiplayer for a good reason, um, but I'm excited to see like what a single player campaign for this would be because they do know yeah. they did note that you can you can play against a computer. Okay. So cool. I'm yeah I'm on the arms hype train. I want this thing at Evo. Yeah, that's want, like, exactly. I want, like, Arms at I, want, Evo. I want people like on the main stage just staring each other down. Yes. Throwing yes. punches in front of a Switch d- device. Imagine like, like how how much television. how how exciting would that be? Yeah. That would be so awesome. Yeah. I really oh, it's not going to happen. I want it to happen so bad though. Yeah. I yeah, so. I I legitimately think Arms looks really good. Yeah, that's, and it's uh, coming Nintendo spring. First party, I don't do we know who's making that? I don't I think it's a yeah. I don't know. I think it's just internal Nintendo. Okay. All um, right. Yeah. So uh, next, as you kind of mentioned uh, about a certain reveal of a certain game, Splatoon mm. Two. Yeah. Is next. Uh, I feel like... was pretty surprised that it was a full on sequel, not not yeah. a port of Splatoon. Yeah. What do you think? I I'm more interested in Splatoon Two than I was in the original. I think um, when did the original play, Splatoon... Did you play the original? Did you play any I've of never... No, I've never touched it. Okay. Uh, I was never really that into it. When Splatoon came out and all the updates and the Splatfest were going on, everybody was seemed to be into it. And it was on Twitch for a while, uh, one of the top games. And I just never really mm-hmm. had any interest in seeing that game. I never... I mean, I never played a lot of the multiplayer. I, I The single player of that game is really good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially the final boss is pretty excellent as well 
Uh, but Splatoon 2 looks like a game that I'm I'm more interested in. Uh, in I don't know why necessarily, mm-hmm. but I just think there's maybe it's, some new weapons and some new abilities that look really cool. Yeah, it man, Splatoon. I'm happy it was successful as it was. Uh, it's it's such a cool just looking. It's it's such a cool looking game. It's got so much style to it. I I really love it. Uh, yeah. Even if I'm much more like I'm not a huge multiplayer person, like that is such a cool thing. Also, I just want to like. I just want to point out because it feels like the reaction to Splatoon Two is a bit more muted than you would expect, right? Mm-hmm. Splatoon comes out, and I get like we knew there was a Splatoon thing. Most people thought it was like a director's cut, kind of a port. Yeah. Uh, whereas it's actually a full on sequel, but it's like you know Splatoon came out was wildly successful, people loved it, and here we are. They announce a full on sequel to that game, and it's out in like three or four months. Yeah, it's coming summer. Yeah, uh, is what they said. That's super exciting. Yeah. I feel like people should be more excited about that. And there will be updates after launch, just like the original Splatoon. And the original Splatoon was great with after yep. launch, with post launch updates. Yep. Why aren't people more excited about that? <laughs> I don't know. That's I'm excited. Question. Bring it, and it's so cool. Because, like. I think you you notice a trend during this show, which is one thing that I think we'll see how it pans out. Of course, um, it's hard to speak, speak to it over you know before anything happens. But throughout the show, you notice a trend of Nintendo, at least Nintendo first party, of having these games spread out, mm-hmm. right? So not not you know not to spoil anything. We have Zelda at launch in April. We have Mario Kart, and granted, yep. Mario Kart's a port. But if you read up on what they're adding to it, they're adding a lot of new stuff to that game. New battle mode, the Inkling yeah. kids are in it. They're basically fixing the problems people had. Like I'm I'm pretty excited to get back into Mario Kart. You are there have... any Sorry, go, go I, was, I was just going to ask are there any original new tracks in I don't Mario know. Kart I don't know. It's probably the DLC. That or not. Yeah. It's probably the DLC ones cuz I saw a link in the trailer. I'm not sure. I think there were some rumors that there would be new tracks. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. Okay. Okay. Um we have Arms in the Spring. I saw someone saying Arms is April. Uh hmm. but I, I don't know if there's any confirmation. I took Spring to mean, oh, that could be the May game. Yeah. And then you have Splatoon two, which could be like a June, July game. Yeah. We know Fire Emblem Musto, again, not to jump ahead, is yeah. this year. That that's getting a Nintendo Direct next week. That could totally be sometime yep. in the fall. Uh Pokemon Stars was not here, but that's going to happen. Yeah. That seems like a done deal at this point. That's going to be holiday. And you've also got Mario, which we'll get to in a second as a holiday. Yes, we will. And, and so you see this first year, and granted, a couple of those I'm, I'm being a little bit more lenient with because we don't know the full details of. But I, that's a pretty good first year, I think. I think so, yeah. For first party Nintendo. Um, And we could, you know, talk and, about and, and again, granted, you have Mario Kart, there's a port. Smash Brothers might be in there somewhere. We didn't hear anything about that. Yeah. But, like, new Mario. Fire Emblem Musou, which I... It's a Musou, sure, but, like, that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, Splatoon 2, really exciting. This new, a new IP on ARMS, which I think looks really good. And then Zelda. Like... Yeah. I think that's pretty good. At least yeah. for first year. That's a... I think that's a really solid lineup. Yeah. Um... But anyways, go ahead. Uh, so what they showed next, what you alluded to, Super Mario Odyssey. Colin. Oh my. Give me the hype. Colin. This was my game that they showed. I, S- this oh. New oh. Donk City. New Donk City. Colin, Bowser? My, that, that, He's like, like Elvis wearing all that white. He's in Bowser's wedding. The... That might be my favorite incarnation of Bowser, period. Yeah. We've only seen a few seconds of him. This is the feelings I had watching that, that ukulele trailer the first time. Mm-hmm. Like, ten times that. Yeah. This is suddenly, like, this year of Games Confirmed coming out this year. Of things that I am most excited to play. Yeah. It is like Persona 5 and then Super Mario Odyssey. Yep. Boom. And then Zelda, of course, and near. There's a lot more, but dude, like Super. Oh my God, that game! It's, it's got like the starship kind of thing that almost seemed to be like in Galaxy. Like he's running around this giant ship. Oh, 
you run to different worlds. Like it's kind of yeah. this mix of like sixty four and sunshine, and then like Galaxy three in a weird way. Yeah, so I thought it was gonna be like a Galaxy three kind of thing. Um, New Donk City. I'm just watching this trailer right now, and I'm just smiling. It, uh, oh, it real. I don't even know what to say. This game really has me. It it's it's done. It's over. Mark it in the books. Like this is the game for holiday twenty seventeen. Yeah. Hey, move so. over Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Move over whatever. Doesn't even yeah. matter anymore. This is probably going to come out in November, right before Black Friday. It'll be like Nintendo Day. Yep. I wouldn't be shocked if this and Pokemon shared this release date. Yeah, right. In true Nintendo fashion. But good God. Oh, my. Like, oh. <laughs> they got the uh, they got the odd job thing going on where you can the throw hats? your hat. You can throw your hat. The hat mechanic. You can jump on your hat after you throw it. New Donk City. <laughs> that was the it best looks part. Beautiful. Oh my god! This game it is looks beautiful. Unbelievable. There, yeah, there, there's that this is, part where this you're like riding a lion. Level Mario. Oh, absolutely. There's yeah, the part mounts. Where you're riding, yeah. Oh my god. Wow. I didn't know. I when I they first started showing this trailer and it was the city. I was like, "What is this?" And then Mario knew, just pops out of I the sewer. Pretty, not to tell, not to toot my own horn or anything. Okay. But it was was it panned down? You see, like that. You saw some of the flags in the background, and you could see the question mark blocks. Oh. And as soon okay. as I saw that, I was like, "Oh, it's Mario." Yeah. My brother's like, "What? What do you? What do you mean?" I was like, "Look, the question mark." And then yep. he pops out of the sewer. <laughs> huh. And that's the, the the best the the best part is like he runs around the city, and you think, "Oh, dude, it's an open city." And then he's just like, oh, no, he's in a forest now. Oh, now he's, like, flying off to some other place. Yep. Did you notice in parts of that? Have you ever seen the movie Truman Show? I have not, no. Do you know anything about it? No, I don't. I'm sorry. So, Truman Show stars Jim Carrey. Uh, He lives a life, a normal everyday life, you know, 9 to 5 job. And at some point he realizes he's actually the star of his own TV show. And the world around him is all one very big elaborate set. And there's a moment in the movie where he, like, walks out along the water, and eventually he hits, like, the horizon, but it's just a, it's a big dome wall. The sky hmm. is. And so yeah. he's able to touch, reach out and touch the wall. There's a part in this trailer, I think it's in New Donk City, I think, where if you look out, you can see a dome wall barrier all around uh, okay. the landscape, and it's all, like, made up of triangles and stuff. Huh. So, what does it mean? Are we also, trapped? Like, Super Mario Odyssey, great name, great logo. Looks great. I've seen some people on Twitter being like, oh, the humans look weird. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, yes, yeah, they do. Yeah. Get excited. Um, People they, really made rabbits. the Sonic Adventure uh comparisons uh-huh. really yeah. early on and it does really kind of look like the original sonic adventure where sonic is running around with real life human people yeah kind of same thing in sonic it's, 06 that's gonna happens be a good also. game though yeah this is um, next level good oh man the, uh, this and ukulele the, other thing, the saviors of 3d platforming games the other thing we haven't talked about is uh they got the minish cap thing going on yeah the, they do they got the hat has eyes it's got eyes I don't know what that what it means. I don't know. The, there's the hats rabbit, have the eyes. rabbits in the airship. They got hats too. Yeah. Bowser's got a hat. It's like a boomerang yeah, hat. He's throwing he's throwing it too, yeah. I'm i I'm hyped for this oh, game. The oh, more we oh, talk about dude, it, the more Oh I'm my excited. I just realized this. We're gonna have a Bowser amiibo dressed up like that. Oh, we better have one. Oh that would be great. Oh my god! What if it was god. just like a what if it was like a mega amiibo like like a yes. like the mega yes. yarn Yoshi amiibo just like that big? Yes. but it's just like a Bowser. Plush yes, with it. line up at three a.m. in the morning outside the local GameStop. Get ready. Yep. Oh. That game, well, yeah, don't, a game over. You and I, we're gonna do a spoiler cast for that game. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yep. you're getting a switch too, just so you know. Oh, not to yeah. jump too far yeah, ahead. Some, uh, so yeah, what's so what's much. next? What we're, was next? We're on a high was, note right here. We got a little logo that said Monolith Soft. Yeah. And then we got a trailer for Xenoblade 2. Right? Um, I haven't really been too big on the Xenoblade games. Chronicles or Chronicles mm. X. Yeah. 
Um, I just feel like the style just doesn't. I feel fit like me or it, it's it's pretty similar. Um, I'm it, the one of the big things with Xenoblade, especially that I remember from Chronicles X, is like the faces on the characters always looked really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like, and maybe I'm just, maybe I'm projecting here. It felt like while still retaining a pretty similar artistic style, it seemed like that character that was running around was a bit different graphic, like style wise. Does that make yeah. sense? Seemed almost more cartoony. Uh, that wasn't, thought, that wasn't Shulk though, was it? No, no. I think that's a new character. Okay. Uh, that I thought he looked better. I thought he looked mm -hmm. noticeably better. And not just like graphically, but like the face, I thought yeah. looked better. Maybe I'm projecting there. Um, here's the interesting thing about this. So I'm like, this is really exciting. You know, uh, you know, new Xenoblade. Calling it Xenoblade Two is like kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I never finished Xenoblade Chronicles X. Uh, but that is that was a really cool game. Just it was so long. It's never even. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think I got like halfway. I think. Uh, and also like the story was kind of whatever. So I would. I would hope that maybe this game story wise, it was a bit more there. Um, they're saying they, as in Nintendo are saying this is a 2017 game worldwide. Oh, okay. I don't believe them for a second, but yeah, I would I love for them either. to prove me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? I don't, uh, what's next is, uh, something you mentioned earlier also as well. Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah. Which I didn't know what it was because I figured it was the Fire Emblem logo when they showed it in um, Japanese. I recognize the music. Okay. It's the Fire Emblem kind of theme. The da 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 ba. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, if you, that's uh, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> if you want some more Musou, you can also get Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and yeah, 2. Yeah, you can. That's cool. On Nintendo Switch. So well, well, before Musou. we jump ahead, you know, because there's more to that announcement but uh fire emblem is getting a direct this this week yes so. yep uh that's also Definitely supposed to be out that. this year and that's that's totally expected i figured it'd probably be this year um koei tecmo they churned those games out pretty quick mm -hmm. and they're good like hyrule warriors really good dragon quest heroes really good um yeah. so i i have confidence in this game yep uh, then we also got uh, they also name dropped Dragon Quest ten and eleven. Yeah, they did. Come and they and, I, was and like, they just, I was like, oh Curtis, they're they gonna say something us. new. They teased yeah. us. They're like, ah, it's happening. You already knew, but now it's yep. like you know, it, it's it is happening. Yeah. Um, but that kind of started the Square Enix block. Uh, uh a I little think. bit, a little bit. I we kind of rolled back in on them at some point, but it was uh, Dragon Quest ten and eleven confirmed those. And the thing is, you know, it being that be that event being in Japan, uh. 10 I'm not too sure about. I think it might be this year. 11 is supposed to be coming out this year in Japan. The Switch version has kind of been up in the air. I don't know if they confirmed that for 2017 or not. If that's going to be simultaneous with PS4. Because they did confirm that it's a PS4 version. Mm -hmm. For the Switch. Which okay. is to be expected. Uh, then the interesting thing. So Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 is coming. Do you remember if they said it was bundled together? I didn't recall that. I think they just said Heroes 1 and 2. Because I think together. those are supposed to be in the spring. Okay. In the U.S. I could be wrong. Maybe that's just a Japan thing. But uh, cause Heroes 2 isn't coming out here until April 25th. Okay. So I'm wondering what the time frame on those might be. Uh, it'd be yeah. kind of interesting if Switch got both of those games together in a similar time frame. Yeah, I thought they made it sound like the Heroes One and Two was gonna be together. The way the logo, like it was kind game. of, it looked like it. was Yeah, a they made. Yeah, they made like thing. a logo that looked like yeah. it was together. Yeah. Uh, but that's exciting. That's cool. It's it's good to see. I'll talk more about it. It's good to see some notable JRPG related third parties show up, even if yeah. in a minor way. Uh, so before we got to the other Square Enix thing, uh, they also Atlas showed Dropped a the bomb. new. Shin Megami Tensei game. Yeah, so we don't know anything um, about it. Yeah, um, it's their just new, new game. So on apparently, Switch. this was lost in translation. Apparently, at this same moment, they mentioned that they're working on another, a new SMT game for 3DS. Oh, okay. But and then with that, that trailer was teasing their new HD project for the Switch for Shin Megami Tensei. Um, and there's already some speculation for people that it's probably going to be a Switch and PS4. Uh, but that's my only concern with that, like, that's super cool. Obviously, we're going to get, you know, only a matter of time until we get another Persona or another SMT game, of course. Uh, so that will always be exciting. 
My only thing with that is it really, really reeks of, and Xenoblade to a lesser extent as well, Xenoblade 2, it reeks of what happened with the Wii U. If you remember, Wii U came out two months later, that January Direct, where they announced Xenoblade, Yoshi's Woolly World, uh, what ended up being Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Remember, it was Fire mm-hmm. Emblem Cross SMT. Yeah. Uh, there was, like, all these games. That, like, it was a really exciting Direct. It got people, like, kind of hyped about the Wii U after a pretty bad launch. And a lot of those games took forever yeah. to come yeah. out. Xenoblade notably got delayed and delayed. SMT Cross Fire Emblem ended up being Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which is a great game. But that also, yeah. like, went missing for a while. So I do, there's con- some concern there that maybe they're doing it again. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Hopefully, that's not the case. Interesting, uh, this SMT game for Switch is running on Unreal Engine 4. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Uh, so yeah. that's interesting. Uh, but then we get to uh, the next, I believe this is a Square Enix game, Octopath Traveler. Yes. Project pretty good. Octopath Travelers. Yeah, Project. Cullen, yeah. um... You're right. It looks pretty good. So as this was playing, you know, I'm like, oh, this looks really good. I wonder who's developing it. Is you want to know, who, you wanna know Tokyo, who's making it? Uh, nope. Tokyo Factory nope. thing? You want to know who's making that game? Platinum Games. The Bravely Default Team. Oh, Sign yeah. me up. Buckle that up. That makes sense. Get, yeah. I'm, oh, that's like second most exciting announcement yeah. for me behind Mario. Yeah that yeah cool. yes uh it's uh, it's a trailer definitely worth watching i don't know how much I'm, I'm into it but that's very very exciting so then we had a bunch of hey let's switch on over to this guy to talk about yeah well you know, so hey what's next the, uh, the traveler the Oct- octopath um oh, okay. that was part of like a montage wasn't it uh, i think it was an official trailer was it okay maybe i thought they maybe had the a, montage like, hasn't the happened square yet. enix logo okay. and everything okay never mind Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think the montage was at the end. Um, we can we can kind of skip through this next part though. There's yeah, in general, I can go real it's all quick. one thing. Yeah, I can go real quick. Uh, they basically had, hey, let's switch on over to this guy. It was a guy from Sega that basically said, "Please be excited, we're developing." And not things. just a guy from Sega, Colin. Who was that? Uh, I don't remember his name. He's the Yakuza. Oh, okay. Guy. Um. Then they said, hey, let's switch on over to this guy. And it was a video of Todd Howard saying, Skyrim's coming to the Switch. Be excited. <laughs> uh, then we had um, Uncle it. Death himself, <laughs> Suda51, come out on stage. Yeah. And uh, say Travis Touchdown's coming back in some form or fashion to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, without, with that, like, out and out developers. confirming a new No More Heroes, he kind of Yeah, did. I basically wrote down new, new, new No More Heroes, yeah. And then he's like, I want to be, like, wrestling. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, I'm, whatever, man. <laughs> And EA came out with uh, Tr- Bill Trinan is translating, saying that EA Sports FIFA is coming out. The most popular sport in the world. Yeah, like that's all they could give us, you know, from EA. Oh, it's is... EA. Yeah. Unprecedented um, partnership. And then the final thing, we went over to the uh, person from Nintendo of Europe who gave us, gave us oh, a message. Well, so before we get there, I just want to okay. like, we're going to get back to the negative part of this okay all right here comes negative nancy here we go everybody like do they just not learn like this like do they just not get it that trotting out developers because it'd be different it'd be different if the wii u was a rousing success had huge support from third party uh great first party like it had a good first party lineup maybe even great um it'd be different right it'd be different if they were coming off the super nintendo You'd be yeah. you'd be willing to give them a little bit more, little bit more leeway, trotting out developers with nothing to show, and saying like, "Oh, yeah. look, Studio Fifty One's on board. He's cool, right? You like yeah. Sega, you like EA. Well, maybe you don't, but FIFA, <laughs> like, no, like that's that. I think one of the major issues with it, with what the messaging, at least for the Switch, is, and some of that leads into the accessory pricing as well. I think is they don't. I feel like Nintendo seems to think that they're in a position that they can be a little like, uh, I don't know the word, um, that that they are, are free to kind of do whatever 
Yeah. And they don't necessarily need to come out guns blazing when that's like absolutely what they should be doing. The Wii U, you would consider the last year, year and a half, maybe even two years of the Wii U was dire, even more so than the Wii, I would argue. You remember, and remember, I brought this up to you last week. We were talking. The end of the Wii life cycle had, was very bad. was not great. It had, like, you know, a Skyward Sword. But other than that, there was not a lot coming out. And, the Wii, you know, the Wii U is coming up, and a lot of people mm-hmm. were hyping it up as, oh, they're saving all their projects for the Wii U. They're saving all that stuff. They're going to push it to the Wii U. Wii U is going to yeah. have a great lineup coming out of the gates. That yeah. did not happen, not in the slightest. Then, yeah. Wii U, situations dire. You know, and it's, we're hearing, like, games are getting pushed back. Uh, Zelda obviously makes the Switch um, main cross-platform. And so, you, again, the discussion happens. Oh, they're pushing everything to the Switch. They're moving developers over. It's going to be great. They're going to have a great lineup out of the gate. And what do they do? Like, half the thing is like, oh, we got one, two, Switch. Or, or you you just have... Or you, or you have developers who, like, don't even have anything. Yeah. They've done nothing. And I get, like... Maybe you're like, oh, well, you know, it's our first time unveiling the system. The system's a month and a half from coming out. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between the PS4 reveal event, which was almost a full year, and the Xbox reveal event, which was like six to seven months. Yeah. And six weeks. And, you know, like maybe you want to save it to E3. You don't have that, like, you're not in the position to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. To be out here and saying, yeah, we get our last two years, we're kind of dire, but it'll be fine. Like, no, show us it'll be fine. I, like, when you're asking people to pay money for a network service that has historically been awful. Mm-hmm. What? Why? Like, why? So, I kind of want, I don't know if we want to get into this now, but like, all I was thinking about was that it just feels like a new Nintendo and it feels like a post Satoru Iwata Nintendo. Does that I don't I don't know. Like I it feels like regular old Nintendo to me. Okay, it just it, kind of feels like a like a Nintendo that like a Satoru like a Nintendo that I haven't seen before. I, I guess I just feel like the game like Arms I just felt like we wouldn't have seen. Oh, well sure. I just mean by that I by what I mean by regular old Nintendo, it's man, they've got a lot of stuff that's like super exciting. And there yeah. are reasons to be really excited. And at the same time, they have these really dumb, just horribly dumb decisions. Yeah. Or things in place that just make you scratch your head and go, what? What do you, what? Do you, mm-hmm. like, you guys know, right? You know that's ridiculous and you just got to sell it. Yeah. Surely. I don't know. That's, it's frustrating because, especially because the same thing happened with the Wii U. Where you had games that were announced horribly early, and you had people walking out on stage with EA talking about unprecedented partnerships that went nowhere. Yep. Now they didn't. They use... showed Ken. Le- they showed Ken Levine in 2012. No, 2011. Yeah. E3 2011. They showed footage of Bioshock Infinite and Ken Levine talking about the Wii U. And like, even after that came out, he was like, "We don't really have any plans to support." No, the it. one it's great, exception, it's an exciting product. Yeah, no. The one exception I will give, and and some of this again is giving a little leeway and being maybe a little bit nice to them, uh, and giving them the benefit of the doubt in some scenarios, is seeing Square Enix out there with almost a handful of different Dragon Quest games, seeing um, the new game from the Bravely Default team there seeing shimigami tensei you know so seeing atlas on board um Mm -hmm. you know seeing a new fire emblem game in the first year that's exciting like i said the first party line of that first year looking good uh but some of the other games we did see we actually saw footage of from third parties especially the japanese side there is reason to be excited for that and hope and so you just hope that those games aren't three or four years off and hopefully those are games that are within the first year to year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that case, and it's the thing is like, I, I, I do think this, the switch is going to be similar to the 3ds and that it might have a little bit of a shaky start, but I think in overall, it's going to be pretty solid, especially if you factor in, it's a good chance. A lot of those 3ds Japanese third party games are going to make the switch. 
Yeah. And you know, and I think that in and of itself, it's the Switch is in a position to be a pretty good uh kind of JRPG machine. Mm-hmm. Um and and that remains to be seen. You know, it's kind of speculative at that point, but there's reason to be excited about that and seeing Square Enix and Atlas on board with at least a little bit to show is nice. Um yeah. it's just Maybe, yeah, I don't know. This was their first live presentation in, like, five years. And the directs, for the most part, have been working out for them. Maybe just stick to directs. Because whoever you have planning live presentations, like, does not get it. See, I disagree. I like the live. I hope they do a live. Oh, I love it, too. I love, I much prefer live presentations. But if your live presentation is going to be, like, two-thirds of nothing. Yeah. And hey, here's this controller that you already can probably figure out what it does. Yeah. Like, no. That's why I really think like people I don't know. We're a Sony website and we're a Sony podcast. But I really think people should look at Sony's E3 press conference. And to a lesser extent their PlayStation experience, one from a co- from last month. Yeah. And I really think they should look at that and say, hey, maybe people like that. People responded yeah. well to that. There's a reason yeah. why people responded well to those. Because mm-hmm. uh, there was things to be excited about. Let's be exciting. The... Let's, let's be excited again. We're going to bring up the hype. Bring up the hype. We we got we got Reggie. And they almost like... killed me. They almost killed me he, with this segment. He was like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, hey, Reggie, when's Breath of the Wild coming out? And he's like, I don't know. I have to go over here to this person. Oh, look, Mr. Miyamoto. Yeah. Do you know when Breath of the Wild is coming out? No, you need to go talk to Mr. Aonuma. Oh, Mr. Aonuma, do you know what? You know, it just kept yeah. going and going and going. And, 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 the, and the, way this whole, the way this whole thing was going, I expected, like, in Reggie's mind, they're like, oh, they're not going to like it. They're not going to like it. Yeah. Um. Uh, but I think they, they rolled showed, a new trailer. They showed a three minute and forty nine second trailer. And what a trailer! What a was. trailer, man! <laughs> oh my I, god! So I've been excited for Breath of the Wild, but I haven't really yeah. been like, yeah, like I'm really that into Breath of the Wild. This looks pretty hot. Yeah, this y- looks ukulele pretty hot. incredible. Le- ukulele, ukulele and hot. Mario Odyssey yes. hot. That's what we're talking yes, about. Absolutely, lots of voice acting. Voice. Um, I haven't now, listened to the U.S. version yet. Now, is there voice? Is there I think U.S. So. voice? I think okay, so. Okay, I didn't know if there was or if there was just going to be Japanese dub or whatever. Well, we English. we had heard we had heard uh, in at E3 last okay. year. Remember, we heard uh Zelda presumably with the whole wake up. Yeah, and open your eyes. The thing. open open your yeah. eyes. Yeah, uh, that's but we had a lot more yeah. voice acting, a lot more characters. Yeah. Uh. Man, oh, saw little cokery cor- guys yeah. from Wind Waker. I'm liking that. I'll oh, take that. Yeah, we saw those. We saw those when they were at E3 demos. Um, we saw. Oh, oh okay. my god, we saw all these. Tr- oh, yeah, man. We saw the great Deku tree. Saw the De- oh. Deku, whatever. Tree. Great Deku tree. Yeah, that is a Zelda like that game. You know, it's it's funny because so eventually it. It was confirmed. It is going to be out March third at launch, which oh yeah oh Colin. Within a week, I'll be playing like within a week of each other. I will be playing Zelda and near Automata, and I don't even know what I'll do with myself. I don't know. Yeah. How I will never be able to how how could I possibly handle that? So that level of I guess, excitement. So I'm listening a little bit to the uh I guess the official Nintendo uh YouTube account US account has the English okay. voice acting. Yeah, I've not watched uh, it yet. Yeah, I was just I didn't I didn't know it, it would have had that up by now. I, I didn't yep. think we we're gonna hear that. Yeah, the, the, the no YouTube account posted quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, I might open that just to, so we can mention some games that we haven't mentioned yet that I am excited about. Uh, yeah, but but Zelda. So let's finish with Zelda. So amazing trailer. Yeah. Um, there was something about Ganon in there. Oh. I am, yeah, man, it's so exciting. Like, and it's the thing of, you know, you think about launch lineups, right? And yeah. more often than not, launch lineups are not great. And mm-hmm. usually you don't really even get one good, like, or great. Like, sometimes you get a couple good games. Um, I, If I think about, like, the Wii U specifically, I actually think, like, Zombie U is a great game. It's underappreciated, yeah. I think. Um, I'm, but I'm trying to, like, PS4 launch... And knack aside, there's not really anything 
PS4 launch wise that kind of stood out. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I really like Knack and I like Lego Marvel Avengers or Lego Marvel superheroes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do like those games, but they're not like, you know, great. Uh, I, like yeah. you think about this Zelda game and man. Yep. Um, similarly, like actually in sixty four, what Super Mario sixty four was a launch game, right? I think so. Yeah. So like that's another one that's like, it's crazy to think that's a launch game when you when you think about the way launch games are perceived. Yeah. Um. And Nintendo, every once in a while, they have one that's like, that kind of stands above the rest and is well well regarded and yeah. remembered for years. And I, you know, you feel like this Zelda game could could be that. Um, yeah. and you know, Twilight Princess was was also launched as well, a uh, similar position that yeah. Breath of the Wild's in. Yep. So before we get into like some of the other miscellaneous stuff that maybe Nintendo's posted on their YouTube channel that wasn't necessarily, it was like part of a montage at one point. Yeah. Um. But there are some other things that I want to mention that are exciting. Before we yep. get there, Colin, um, I want to know, did you pre-order this? I did are not. Are you planning on getting this anytime soon? Why are we off the fact Coming off the fact that I bought PlayStation VR for $400 just recently, mm-hmm. I will probably not. There was nothing... The only thing that really has sold me on like I need a switch is Mario Odyssey. Yeah. And yeah. that doesn't come out till holiday. Um surprisingly enough, another game that kind of sold me was that Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final yeah, challenger. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> that that kind of had me excited. Um, but I did not go pre order one. Um I probably would have if I didn't have to work this morning. Like I probably would have gone to the store. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't, I didn't have time to get off. Um, but so at the I, same uh, time, at the same time, ahead. I was like, I really don't need it. Like, I don't, yeah. I've, I don't need so it So compared right now. to maybe what you were feeling, but going into this presentation and then afterwards, how much do you think you changed your mind or you changed your opinion on whether or not you were getting one, whether it was at launch or anytime soon? Was that changed at all? Do you feel less likely um, or more so was... or... I was just expecting more at launch, I suppose. Um, a lot of things that are coming out at launch seem to be just, you know, like 1-2 Switch and Breath of the Wild, and then just seems to be, like, some ports of games. Uh-huh. Um, one thing that, that didn't really... Well, there's there's a couple others, and I'll mention them when we get there, but... um. Yeah. One thing that was interesting to me, and... Because, obviously, I, I think they're coming out in March, because it's in end of the quarter, and I think maybe this yeah. is as late as they can go. I wonder if um it was interesting that they're coming out March third because there are some other games that are announced that are just March but not necessarily yeah. launch. Like there's a, an updated version of um Fast Racing Neo that I'm kind of excited about. Yeah, and that's it's not at, Fast RMX, I believe. Yeah, that's not necessarily at launch, but mm-hmm. it's in March. And so I wonder, yeah. like maybe what the decision was of going with the third instead of instead of maybe later in March and having maybe a little bit more there at launch. Um, but that said, so I'm just like looking over some of the other trailers that they, that Nintendo threw up on their, on their YouTube, uh, mm-hmm. for things we didn't talk about. Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania is confirmed. Yes. That's good. Yeah. I Get mean, hyped. I feel like it's we'll, the same trailer as they showed before. We'll but... probably play that game on our PS4s, but it's, it's good that it's good that that's going yeah. there. Um, yeah. And Hey, you know, that'll be the only place you can play it, uh, on the road. Yep. So that's cool. Yeah, true. Uh Puyo Puyo Tetris we talked about. No, um, that's Minecraft, exciting. Minecraft Switch edition of course. and and story, and story mode, mode complete edition. Uh Super Bomberman R. Yeah. Konami's putting a video game out. They are putting a video game out. I'm kind of excited for this. It so mm-hmm. this is apparently exclusively for the Switch. Oh, okay. And it will be at launch. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is my I'm number 2 that. launch game right now yeah huh. um but we'll get to that and that looks like that is it on their youtube channel but i know that there are other games um i'm looking at a list right now okay. that they've got a good amount um like an ig and wiki um like this is just what i typed in switch launch games or, or switch games announced that's what came up oh, i had the montage um, pulled up binding of isaac re uh, excuse me binding of isaac afterbirth yeah uh is a game that uh, we talked about has been heroes earlier yeah we- um but that's coming out. Just Dance, Lego City Undercover, Rayman Legends. Uh, yeah, Rayman Legends coming. 
Um, Project Sonic 2017, get hyped. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this game that Chris put on the G chat yesterday about a wipe oh, like a imposter. Oh, Red Out. Do you know Red what that Out, game is? Yes. Not than, really. So that's uh, I mentioned this before when Wipeout that collection was announced. Mm-hmm. There's like a handful of studios out there making, or not a handful, but there's a couple making not Wipeout clones or like mm-hmm. not F Zero. Um, yeah, Red Out's one of those, and it's actually from, and all these studios are like, oh, we're X Wipeout people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty so Red Out is one of those. Okay. Yeah. It looks like it's by Nicalis. Uh, the publishing, Nicholas, yeah. You call it. Nicholas yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we know Rhyme yep. coming. Shovel Knight got announced like the day before. Oh, you know what? Uh, we, the event. We didn't talk about that Shovel Knight news during the show. Oh, that's right. We didn't. There's no. some interesting Shovel Knight news. Maybe we'll try to cover it next oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the there Street was a Spelunker thing game. Is pretty cool. Spelunker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here was a game that I heard some people tweeting oh, about. I a, haven't Snipper seen Clips? Is that Snipper what Snipper Clips. Dude, yes. so that is also, I think, at launch. Okay. That might be my third. I need to see okay. more of it. Um, I need to. I need to watch that. It looks pretty neat. It's a. It's a pretty mm-hmm. interesting looking thing. If okay. nothing else. Uh, Ubisoft, I guess, confirmed Steep is coming. Yep. Yeah. To Switch. They had three. It was that Rayman Legends and Just Dance. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, I think Just Dance is the only one they've confirmed for launch. I think Rayman Legends mm-hmm. is like spring, and yeah. Steep in the PR email. I don't think there was any specific release time frame for that mm-hmm. so and uh, of course there's uh the ukuleles yeah there is yeah that's about it um, yeah um so i um i woke up sky at... skylanders imaginators yeah. Yeah. i woke up at eight this morning mm-hmm. um and then i got to my game stop at 9 a.m so mm-hmm. about an hour before opening yeah uh whole time thinking man what if i get there and there's like 50 people in line or it's like unsure really not sure what to expect uh yeah. there was a couple other people i ended up being like number five in line okay uh, i easily could have shown up there at 10 a.m as the doors opened and it would have been fine our store yeah. where i'm not in a big area at all i'm in like kind of a suburb yeah. area we had 42 systems and then 14 of the like colored uh oh, okay. ones which how st- yeah. mm, i don't the 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 person in me who wants symmetry i want yeah. just give me one that's like two blue controllers not like a blue and yeah. a red like what oh so i got the regular charcoal colored yeah okay um, i probably if i pre-ordered i probably would have gone with the the colored ones yeah. personally so I, uh yeah i mean they're probably more limited uh i pre-ordered the regular one and then uh, zelda Nice. So cool. I will most likely carry that out and get it at launch. I really want to play Zelda. I don't mm-hmm. really want to wait any longer for that. Yeah. I've already been waiting long enough. Um, I guess there's a chance I might cancel if, like, more news starts to come out that's just, like, really bad. But I'm going to get this thing at some point anyways, mm-hmm. especially for, you know, the Square Enix and Atlas support that will be there, it seems like. Yep. Um, and then of course Mario Odyssey and Zelda, um, and, and Nintendo first party anyways, like those games will come and, yeah. and the, for the, for, for a first year, I would bet we still, there are still some first party Nintendo games coming out this year. We don't know about, Yeah. but considering what we do know about thus far, I think that's a pretty decent lineup for yeah, Nintendo first so. party. Granted, the question is, can they fill in the holes with indies and third party? I don't know. It seems unlikely, at least on the now, third party front. But I, I do think that there's stuff there, and and so that's one of the other reasons why I, I'll definitely pick it up at launch. Um, also, uh, there is no reason at all those Joy Cons. Or that pro controller I was should be talk as, about as expensive it. as those I things was, are. That's my where I was plan, going next. My plan going in, I was like, okay, before the presentation, I was like, I'm gonna, I'll probably go in, I'll, I'll pre-order the the Switch, Zelda, and I'll probably pre-order a pro controller just in case on the off chance 
that controller or the system actually is really hard to come by. There is yeah. no way I'm buying any extra accessories for this thing for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I I don't. That's ridiculous. Controllers being like fifty to sixty dollars already is really dumb. Yeah. That is r- way too expensive. I think, but you kind of grin and bear it because that's how how it is. Like yeah, the pro controller being seventy, and then the Joy Cons eighty dollars. Yep. And then 80. you can buy an additional stand for ninety. Yeah, the another dock set. Yep. Just shake my head no. That's stupid. Or you could buy the or you could buy another Joy Con charging grip for that, thirty. That just reeks of like Apple coming out and being like, <laughs> "Here's our headphones that are like a hundred and fifty bucks or whatever however much they cost." The cheapest things here are those Joy-Con wheels. They can get two of them for fourteen ninety nine. Like why? Which is that? Yeah, like, I know why. Right? Wh- why for any of that pricing? Like that's. I don't know. I did, like. That's insane. So, that is so insane. Here's, here's a here's a random thing that I that happened to me when I watched this thing. I watched this and I got over and I started well, seeing all the news that came yeah. out with the. With the uh, accessories and all this other stuff in the launch lineup, you know what? I'm, like, I almost said to myself, if I was really excited for Zelda, I'd go buy a Wii U right now. Just because, like, I mean, that has that. I just like, there's nothing there at, at Switch right now that's like, yeah, I want to go play that. Like, I'd go buy like a a used Wii U mm-hmm. <laughs> and just play Zelda because Zelda's coming out on Wii hey, U. Hey, also. If you've never had a like, I I I think. Hmm. It's hard because, you know, I personally don't think I'd recommend anyone get a Switch at launch unless yeah. you're like me and you just really have to play Zelda, you know, and even sure. then that's not, I mean, look, let's be honest, like, ob- honestly, buying any system at launch probably isn't the smartest thing to do, or I don't want to yeah. say not the smartest, or that implies you being dumb, that's not, necessarily... it's not the, it's not the smartest not course of to... action. As far as a, from a consumer angle of spending money, you would save money by waiting. Yeah, and it's always because even if there's wait. something, even if there's something bad that yeah, happens, there could be like an the issue. Just doesn't, or, you know? Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And that goes for anything, and that always is the case. Launch lineups are always not great. Yeah. All that that's fine. My my main issue is obviously is the networking, like that kind of stuff, and pricing on accessories. But mm-hmm. um, but you know, obviously, I I'm gonna get this thing at day one, most likely. Like, and that's fine. I you know, there are people who do that, and that I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think you're getting scammed or being conned because, like, honestly, anyone who gets hmm. gets in at day one, at least my perception, look, I got the Vita day one and I'm happy with it. It had a really yeah. rough, it had a rough go of it in multiple yeah. years, but I, I think Vita ultimately has a really great library if yeah. you're into the kinds of games that, that that system has, and it has a lot of really great stuff. Uh, PS3 was the same way. I got PS3 very early on, a couple months in, had a rocky start. Eventually, it kind of shaked out 3DS. Now, now the Wii U, there's that's certainly debatable, but like, look, if you've never owned a Wii U, like, hey, there's a lot of really great, especially Nintendo games, on that thing. I think the one exception to this is there is an expectation, and it almost seems like a definite possibility that a lot of the bigger Wii U games might end up being on the Switch, anyways. Yeah, like with a Mario Kart and or a Smash. Um. Yeah, where was that? It's at E3. Talk to us at E3, E3. probably. Oh, okay. My guess. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so with the Switch, it, it is, in my perspective, has always been, if I get something early, if I'm an early adopter on something, I'm buying it because I know that it's going to be multiple years. Right? The expectation going in of, hey, at launch, there might be a handful of things that are pretty cool, or maybe a few. And then for a few months, it might be kind of rocky, maybe even the first year. But as it goes on, things will get better. You gotta uh, believe. You gotta believe. My perception on the Switch right now is, hey, there's there's one game at launch, and really there's only one game I'd be wanting I wanted to play on Switch anyways yeah. uh, that's on my mind in the immediate future, which is Zelda. But there's a couple other like smaller titles that look interesting. Uh, I think Bomberman, actually, I saw it on the stream. I thought that looked pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. But what's encouraging is having Mario there in April, having ARMS just a couple months away, having Splatoon 2 just a few months away. 
And then that whole time thinking, hey, you know, we'll get Mario, we'll get ARMS, we'll have E3, hopefully. New games. Hopefully E3 will maybe soften the blow a bit or maybe reunite the fan base a little bit. Um, yeah. And that whole time you'll have Mario Odyssey to look forward to. And yeah. and so like having a, a first year that first party wise seems pretty solid, um, I think helps too. Uh, obviously yeah. look i i don't think i ever expected them, their networking to be great uh and i don't think it will be i don't think they've given me any confidence in that yeah um but i'm not there for that and and whatever the future what you know however whatever happens with the switch whatever the future of nintendo based hardware is i don't think they're going away anytime soon of course yeah. Um. I had someone text me last night, and they said Nintendo is done. And I'm like, no. I don't think they're done. No. I mean, like, I get it. We're in the moment. We're all overreacting. But no, yeah. <laughs> they'll be fine. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, they get their act together about some some specific things unrelated to the video games that they're creating. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, that's um. I'm excited. I don't know, dude. Like. I, I'm when I get the Switch on launch day, I'm gonna be super pumped about Zelda and yeah, and that'll be that. <laughs> so yep. Is there anything else to say? I don't know. Um, scale of zero to a hundred, your hype index right now for Nintendo Switch. Are we grading the the event or the Switch itself? Uh, the Switch itself. It's bounced up and down a lot over the past twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. I was at like a 90 before the presentation dropped to about a 50 after oh, wow. immediately after I woke up this morning was about at a 60 and it even for a moment was like, oh, should I really, should I really pre-order this thing? But then I was like, no Zelda. Okay. Come on. <laughs> yep. And maybe that's the issue. They've got me. They know they have me. They're like, yep. we don't need to put anything at lunch. And all the Zelda fans will be there. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't know. Seventy. Okay. Seventy. I would say I'm probably like an eighty-five, and I'm not even getting oh, the man. thing. I'd say I'm pretty excited, just like just to see how everything plays out and start seeing videos of people playing it. And I am excited now um, that this is all. Now that games. everything's past us, hopefully this yeah. means other people will be willing to talk about what they're working on. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, you know, honestly, like the Fire Emblem Direct being next this week, mm-hmm. I'm also hoping that throughout the next month and a half, we'll be getting some directs for specific yeah. games. I don't know if that's going to happen, but they've been so quiet for so long. They've waited till such a close time period between now and launch. I'm hoping that also will ignite them a little bit and get them talking about video games again, because yeah. it has been a long time. Yep. And so uh, that's exciting, too. I hope that ends up happening. But we'll see. That remains to be seen. Yep. So. Whew. Whew. January 12th is come and gone. Highs. High highs. Very high highs. And crushing lows, I and would one, say. And 1-2 switches. If I had to grade the presentation, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. Just throwing that out uh, there. I'd probably go like a five. I I'm I'm willing to give it a six because of like Mario and Zelda. That was pretty. That was Mario pretty exciting. especially. Mario yeah, Mario especially. was pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but man, they gotta they gotta figure out. They ask talk to Shuhei Yoshida. <laughs> ask him how do you guys put these presentations together? Yeah. That, exactly d- that right. DJ at the opening was cool. Yeah, so I was like, man, they're really going all in. That's like, what I thought too. This, like, I got me. They're hyped. gonna make this thing cool. Like they maybe they've got hip. like this it's this not gonna edge be to them. Send yeah, Nintendo. exactly. Yeah. Boy, then, uh, boy, was it? Two Switch came out. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like paid service. I will for probably games you don't get to keep. Uh, you know, I, it honestly, it kind of feels to me a lot like how I felt about the Vita going into its launch, when I was very excited. But there was like a number of really, really dumb things about it that just made me really yeah. mad. Specifically, memory cards, specifically 3G. the memory card pricing. Yes. Yeah. That's what the accessory pricing and some of the other things reminds me of. Of like, 
Oh, Nintendo, you're so close. You're so close. Yeah. Yeah. You big dummies. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, that's been a podcast. That has been a podcast. Man, this is is fun. A journey. A journey. It was an odyssey, I'd call it. An odyssey. An octopath travelers. We have no more heroes, and we have what was the other one called? Has, hardly has heroes. been heroes. Hardly heroes. Has been, we, hardly <laughs> heroes is pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the title name. That's an episode title. We we've been hardly heroes. Colin and Curtis in the morning. They're hardly heroes. Yes. All right. Thank you try. for listening. If you did, uh, let us know what you thought of the Switch event. If you care about it podcast at psnstores.com colin it was good you know as much as i guess i was the ranting but and also super hype i i I went all different ends of the spectrum today it was good to hear someone who like you you said that you're in the 80s it's good to hear somebody who's excited yeah still i'm pretty excited just because man if you're just living in the vacuum of the internet it felt like the world was crashing down around you yeah so it's good to hear someone who's still excited yeah I'm so excited sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome, Curtis. We'll be back next week. Take care. See ya.